I know nothing about 3D printing, and today I'm going to show you how to make 3D printed parts for your reef tank. No, this one isn't 3D printed. This is the stock propeller guard for the Ecotech Vortec MP40. And I am going to be making a new one of these today with a 3D printer with no experience at all. Like, at all. I'm probably going to look like an idiot. Let's find out if I look like an idiot on this one. What's up guys? Today we are talking about 3D printing. And I know this is probably gonna be a weird subject, but I'm gonna go for it anyways. See, here in Alaska, getting parts, let's say this broke. Getting parts like this up here would take probably about a week. Amazon Prime, there's no such thing as Amazon Prime up. I mean, there is, but it takes a week to get stuff. It's not two day or same day like some of you in California. Our Amazon Prime here takes about a week to get here. So when we need parts that break, sometimes it's easier to create them than it is to order them. And with all of the cool open source software that is out there and all the cool open source files that are out there, 3D printing has gotten easier and easier for people that don't know anything about CAD designing, this guy, or anything about 3D modeling, also this guy. So today, I'm gonna show you how someone with absolutely no experience in creating anything with 3D printing can create a new propeller guard using everything open source and a $300 3D printer. I know $300 sounds like it's pretty expensive, but at the end of the day, these things used to be thousands of dollars and now they're like 300 bucks, which means at 300 bucks, think about all the parts that we can create for our reef. So I'm gonna go ahead and start showing you piece by piece here how we're gonna put this together. Let's dive into it. All right, so the very first thing that I did was head over to Amazon and look up 3D printers. Now I had done a little bit of research on Reddit and what have you, so I had an idea of what I was looking for I knew that I wanted the Creelty Ender 3 V3, and I knew I wanted the one with auto leveling and dual cooling. So this is the one that I actually ended up buying, and it took me about a week to get this, but I'm very happy that I went with the one that I did. If you want to order one that is very similar, or if you want to order the same one, I'm gonna put that in the description below. The next thing that I needed was filament. Now it came with PLA filament, but PETG is what everybody recommends for reef tanks uh, because PLA will dissolve over time. So I went with a PETG. Finally, I needed that open source software. So I headed to uh, Creelty's website. I went to the downloads page and I downloaded Creelty Print. I'm on a Mac, so I downloaded it for Mac, but they also have Windows and Linux. Finally, I needed the file itself. Now there are several of these websites out there with open source software or open source files that you can use. I use printables, I typed in MP40, and I found this really awesome file. And if you look here in the description, it tells me what I need to do. Print with PETG and print with 100% infill. So that we need to remember when we actually put this into the Creelty program because that's what's going to dictate what we do here. So I downloaded this file, I downloaded the MP40 version, and I imported that into the Creelty software. So here I am opening that up. Now, because a 3D printer cannot print into just open space, anything that has like crossbars or anything like that that can't be built up to it needs to have support or it needs to be printed on the bed itself. So if you noticed, I rotated that so it was with the, uh, the bars going across. I made that so that was down on the bed. I set my infill to 100%. And then what I did was I sliced out the model because I wanted to verify that the print path was going to work and was not going to need supports. So here's the actual print head mocking up what the final product is going to look like. I saved this onto an SD card, took that SD card, put it into the 3D printer, and then all I did was run 
a very basic calibration model that the software automatically comes with. You just have to select calibration and then hit go. And then I let it sit and it ran for about eight hours total making this product. Now, sure, it could have done a lot faster, but when you do 100% infill, it does take a lot more time and a lot more material. But here's a quick little time lapse of what exactly happened here. Once this product was done, you're going to start seeing that there were some there was some cleanup that needed to be done. And so I had a few strings left over from Road Pet G. Um, that stuff, I have a feeling, will get easier as I do more of these. I just did a little bit of cleanup on this. And then this is straight off the bed. So let me show you the final results and we can go from there. All right, so since I've printed the one already, I've actually gone ahead and printed several just to see how they all look and if I can keep the consistency going. So here's the one you actually watched me print. Now this is done with PETG, uh, which is a type of filament. I have also printed some just to see if there was any difference with PLA, um, which from my understanding is actually not very good for the reef because it will dissolve over time. Now, that said, I think the PLA prints a little bit nicer than the PETG, but again, I am a pretty new 3D printer myself, so I have learned a lot with this. There were some strings and stuff that I had to pick out of this, uh, but once you clean everything up, the big thing for me was making sure that these little tabs actually locked on to the MP40, just like the original. Now, when we lined everything up, it actually worked perfect. I do have a spare MP40 that I went and tried at home. This is not my home. This is actually a studio. So I did go home and try these out. Now, what I will tell you, I love them. I love them so much. And I cannot believe that this actually worked off of something I literally downloaded very quickly, very easily from the internet. I popped into some open source software and I managed to print with a $300 3D printer. This is wild. I am super, super excited. I can think of so many parts that I want to print. And I have so many more tanks that I'm going to be setting up here shortly. There might even be one behind me here soon. So thank you for coming along on this journey. I look forward to more videos showing you what we do up here in Alaska, how we have to kind of work around um, some of the limitations that we have. Livestock is pretty difficult to get. Dry goods are pretty difficult to get. So a lot of the stuff that we do up here, we have to get a little creative on. I look forward to the next video with you. If you like this kind of content, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Hope you have a great rest of your day.